thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's webinar Wednesday. Um, if any of you guys don't know me, my name is Stephanie Fox from the Network One, um, and I'll be moderating this webinar. And we also have Julian Bolding on the call as well. Um, this is our well second webinar of the day, but these two webinars are our first of 2023. Um, and I would like to take the opportunity to wish you all a happy, healthy and successful new year. Uh, so just an update from us. Uh, we're very excited to be holding our first live Indie Summit since before the pandemic. And it'll be held in beautiful Singapore this April 17th and 18th. Um, be great to see you there. So please do book via the link in the chat, which I'm sending now. So just some housekeeping before I introduce our speakers. Um, I'm going to give a five minute introduction now. Um, our speakers will talk for about 40 minutes and assuming we've got some time, we'll have a little Q&A afterwards. So the main session will be finished by five o'clock London time. Uh, if you have any questions for our speakers, you can send them by clicking the bottom of the page where it says Q&A and just type your question there and we will address them after the presentation. Uh, we're currently recording webinars, so if you prefer not to take notes, that's totally fine. I'll send you all a recording afterwards. Thank you. So now to introduce our speakers. Uh, Yari Laudavori is a co-founder and creative director of Curio in Finland, and Eli Tuominen is co-founder and strategy director. Yari co-founded Curio to build a bridge between traditional and social media. He's received international awards for his work with clients from various fields and sizes, from startups to Fortune 500 companies such as Microsoft, Nestle, and Nokia. El Eli has worked with Fortune 500 companies as well, and the biggest advertisers in the Nordics, such as Volkswagen, Microsoft, Arla, and Philips. Eli has received various acclaimed industry awards for her work, and has been selected among the top speakers in Finland, listed by Speakers Forum. So today, Yari and Eli will present the findings of the Social Media Marketing Trends Report for 2023, made in collaboration with us at the Network One. They'll be exploring what social trends are likely to be influencing your agency and your client's business in 2023. So without further ado, let's find out. I'll pass you over now to Yari and Eli. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Whilst I set up the pick, would you like to say a few words about our agency before we head on with the actual show? Indeed. Uh, greetings from a very dark Helsinki. And we are joining from an agency called Curio. And we do, uh, in addition to these type of, of research papers and Kudos to all of you um, and all of the indie agencies that have participated. In addition to these, we do hands-on uh, social media marketing for our clients. So that means all around social 360 uh, content campaigns, paid social influencers and all of that. But today we'll be having a deep dive into the trends uh, for 2023. Just to kind of like uh, lead you in to the whole subject, let's look at the state of social before we dive into the trends. So we can see from various different reports that uh, social media is taking a lion's share of all the media time that we spend watching whatever sorts of media. And especially when it comes to the younger demographics, that is kind of like their go-to media. Half of young Americans say that they live online. And of course, the older ones live there too. They just might live in different sorts of places. So as we all know, TikTok has become the favorite uh, venue, place, platform for, for Gen Z. Uh, still, Facebook is the number one when it comes to millennials and older. Now, advertisers and marketers, they are, of course, following suit. Uh, we know that the spend towards digital has been increasing over the years. It's been rising steadily over the past 20 years at around three percentage points per year. And it took a nice uh, steeper leap during the pandemic when it was like five percentage points per year. And it's gonna keep on increasing. And social is of course taking uh, 
big part of that increase in the budget, whether we're talking about the increase in numbers of, uh, let's say, videos or short videos or story types of videos or in influencer marketing or whatever various of the various ways that social media uh, is part of, of the marketing mix. Uh, all of that seems to be increasing still. Um, TikTok being presumably still this year the biggest winner when it comes to kind of like where the investments are going to be made most heavily on but of course the more traditional more established social media channels will be part of uh, every marketer's mix uh, for this year as well uh, but that's just to give you a kind of like a quick quick roundup of of where the social is uh, with regards to us marketers and, and agency people uh, but in today's session we will be talking about the trends and we will be sharing uh, some key insights from this year's trend report which was just published today and for those of you who are not familiar with the concept uh, this is the third year that we are doing this but for those who of you who are new to the uh, report this is something that uh, is made up uh, of uh, interviews with uh, various different agencies of the Network One, spanning from all over the uh, world, from China to the United States, from South Africa to um, UK and all over Europe and everything in between. Uh, and these faces and the long list of names are the people who we should thank for sharing their insights during the busiest time of the year uh, in December or November. Uh, and um, many of them doing that uh, for the second time, even some of them doing it for the third time. So huge thanks for everyone. Now we've tried to do our best to make a synthesis, some sort of a compilation of all the uh, answers and all the points of views. And that is what we're going to look at today here with you guys. So 10 major trends. Uh, and as uh, Stephanie already said, uh, this uh, webinar will be given to you later on the, the stream. But also you can take a look at all of those uh, respondents' interviews and their answers and insights in the report, which is uh, also uh, can be found uh, online today. But this uh, webinar's agenda looks something like this. And without further ado, let's dive into the first trend that was highlighted by our experts. Many of them, actually. And this is a superbly interesting one. Search is going social. So as users are taking their search behavior to social channels, it is time that we, as brands and marketers, are starting to think about SEO with regards to all the content that we publish. Now we've had the chance to have some video inserts or, or interviews from some of our experts. And we'll start with uh, Gabi Arriaga uh, with her points of views on this matter of search becoming more social. Hi everyone, I'm Gabi Arriaga, founder of Leonardo 1452 and author of the tool and book Near Future Thinking. Up until 2021, Google was synonymous with search engine, but in 2022, we detected the first signs that this is changing. Today, users, and especially younger users, prefer to search everything directly from social platforms like TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube Shorts. Even the restaurants where they will go out to eat is searched on these platforms and not on Google Maps. So in 2023, companies that already employed a traditional SEO strategy must now have a social SEO strategy, giving care to every word they use in the description of their bio, captions, and even the location tags on the content they publish. And in addition to all of the experts' insights and views that will be shared here, we also uh, kind of like for this presentation purpose, we went through almost a hundred of other trends reports and try to kind of like add something from there to these insights uh, to kind of like make the point even clearer. So we'll start with some graphs to add 
to this uh, these insights from our experts. So um, as can be seen from this uh, study by Hootsuite and We Are Social, uh, the time that or the, the amount of people who are spending time on social is more than the amount of people who are spending their time on search portals. So that makes sense that people would be also doing their searches on those channels. And as Gabi was also saying, this is true. This new behavior is true, especially for the younger audiences. And it is true for all sorts of social media platforms. So not just TikTok or anything, but throughout all the social platforms, people do search for products uh, using the various tools that those channels offer. And there lies a uh, kind of like a behavioral change here also, which is highlighted in this quote by Ariana. So Google recently found that nearly half of young people turn to social platforms like TikTok and Instagram for answers instead of searching. The younger audience's purchase journey starts from curiosity and it's down to brands and marketers to guide them along a path of inspo and ideas rather than brands and products. So we need to start thinking about all the searchability, the stuff that our consumers or target groups will be doing online from a different perspective. Uh, that is also highlighted here in this research by GWI, uh, in which they uh, sought to find out which sort of behaviors people do online and which they favor and how much time they spend with each and every, every of these. So when comparing 2018 to 2022, we see that the biggest rising star here is the finding new ideas or inspiration, which has risen from nine to the sixth place. So that is definitely in line with the whole uh, behavioral change that we're seeing happening. And of course, as I said, uh, TikTok is driving this change. Uh, their own trends report says that uh, 1.8 uh, is the number that uh, are more likely to introduce users to new topics they didn't even know that they liked. So that is kind of like they start with something that they might be interested in, let's say bread baking, and then they go on TikTok and search for stuff related to that. And then they end up seeing something that they totally didn't know that they were actually looking for. And then they are inspired by that. And then let's say that it is some content with, with a relationship to a brand, then they, of course, go and make that purchase. So that is uh, the first trend, uh, a superbly interesting one and something that all the brands in all their activities are, uh, on social should really uh, think about this year. As we all know, that SEO and SEM are big uh, places for spending uh, on digital. So there is a lot to think about whether that spend is going to the right places or not. Number two, this steps into the whole influencer marketing thing or creator uh, marketing thing. So creator culture is flourishing with the barriers to entry becoming lower and the monetary incentives higher. There are more creators than ever. And thus there is also a wider spectrum of creativity. Let's start with a kind of like big picture around the whole influ influencer marketing scene. So we do know that it has been expanding. It is enormous. It's uh, estimated to be the size, four times the size of TikTok's uh, advertising revenue uh, as of last year. And if we look at, for example, just one market, a big market, China, uh, we see that the, uh, the size of the influencer economy has been rising over the past years rapidly, and it is forecasted to do so even more in the upcoming years. Consumers have also, also shifted kind of like their thinking and behavior and, and purchase behavior, especially um, when it comes to these celebrity or influencer founded brands, which have been popping up more and more over the past years, the younger generations do prefer those. So there is really big money also in the whole creator culture. But now, how does it then affect brands on the upcoming year? Let's hear it from Natalie Cheney from Barrett. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Cheney and I'm a social strategist over at Barrett in San Francisco. 
One of the trends I personally find the most exciting about influencer marketing in 2023 is because of the growing popularity of becoming a content creator and how revenue has really started to shift the game, the barrier to entry to becoming a content creator has actually drastically lowered. In fact, we saw that 30% of 18 to 24 year olds and 40% of 25 to 34 year olds already consider themselves to be a content creator. This influx of creators is really encouraging for creativity as it's led to an explosion of what creativity can look like in social. We've already started to see this a little bit, but we cannot wait to see what the rest of 2023 has in store. So more creators from different sorts of fields leading to more and more topics being discussed uh, on various different social media channels. This is a great example from Fast Company uh, that your doctor is on TikTok. And we all know that who, whomever spends time on TikTok already, that the the difference, uh, the sorts of different types of influencers or creators that are popping up there are from all walks of life and all fields. It's not anymore uh, tied just to, let's say, lifestyle or something like that. And now the platforms themselves, they have also kind of like seen that this is happening. The creative culture is becoming ever more potent. And thus, as can be seen in this Trend Hunter report, they are uh, making more tools for those creators to really monetize their efforts, their content, their communities that they're building. And also this affects a wider culture, the pop culture, however we want to describe that. As is said in the uh, Work Marketers Toolkit report, we are in an era of bubble up culture. So no more it is kind of like trickle down culture in which the media uh, is held by few and those uh, those medias then somehow um, select what sort of things are becoming trends and so forth. But these days as the media has been democratized and uh, people are spending more and more time uh, with creators and their content, that is the place where the culture bubbles up and then uh, becomes some of those things then become mainstream culture. And many of that stuff is happening uh, on creators, uh, communities and their, their uh, channels and platforms. Moving on to third trend, the return of social to social media. Let's hear it from Eli from day one agency. Hey everyone, my name is Eli Williams, coming to you live from Day One Agency based out of New York on the beautiful 22nd floor. And here's what's on our radar as the biggest trend in social media to watch as we kick off the new year. What we're seeing is that consumers, you know, kind of exhausted by a constant barrage of ads in their feeds, cancel culture, spur of the moment platform changes, and, you know, aware of a lack of privacy, are shifting their attention and time to more closed off if you know you know communities to supplement their digital diets. In short, I think one of the key themes here is the return of social to social media. And the brands that break through in this new era will do so by you know forming a two-way dialogue with their consumers, actually turning them into community on the way. So 2023 will really mark a sea change in social media as a whole with authentic interaction, human curated feeds and community at the center. This is something that gets talked about quite a lot and quite often in social media trends reports. But this year, we truly see that there is a bigger momentum. If we look at just, let's say, the new platforms, the rising stars in, in the social media landscape, they are uh, built around the whole thing of, of social genuinity and so forth. As, for example, Be Real, as the name suggests, uh, you, you really need to be real it goes also for uh for how consumers want to interact with brands whether it is by using gifs memes emojis or not so really this sort of informal way of communicating and uh despite the market the vast majority of people want to see this sort of informal uh communications so really kind of like feeling socially close to those brands. And it's not 
uh, even tied to just brands, but also the whole creator culture and creator scene is seeing this shift towards more like community based, uh, more tighter uh, knit groups. So as the Washington Post uh, article here highlights for creators, community is the new follower count. So they are really building their communities, tighter knit, more socially like uh, more social as in real life than just followers that you can buy off the internet or something like that. And the whole thing, this third trend can be really nice or is really nicely summarized in this quote by uh, Rama and uh, her team at Adolescent Content. So Gen Z feels unequivocally, unequivocally that content needs to be, be believable and authentic and should remind people online that they are not alone. Authentic content doesn't sell or preach is the type of video or static post your friend would make and send you to make you laugh or cry. So that well, really summarizes it nicely. Yes, content that um, makes you feel not alone. What a great guideline for every one of us thinking about content for the upcoming year. Definitely. On with the fourth. Yes, and one of my personal favorites. Um, so coming to the B2B aspect of social. So we've been doing this report for a few years now, and, and this is the first year that B2B is, is really popping up. And this um, has to do with all the points already mentioned. So the rise of, of creators from all uh, fields and industries. Um, and it does seem that B2B has a lot to gain uh, from all of the changes going on on social. Um, and let's hear um, what Sophia Bunker has to say uh, from MG Empower from the UK. Hi, my name is Sophia Bunker. I'm a PR and marketing executive at MG Empower. So the most interesting trend for social media and B2B marketing is that B2B strategies are moving from becoming awareness and promotion driven to also offering some kind of value to audiences. In that sense, we predict that education and entertainment will be the two areas that brands will be focusing on the most. Um, and, you know, businesses will also understand that they can build a lot more credibility and trust by offering this value to audiences and by showing that they understand that there are people on the other side as well. And, you know, this leads to another trend, which is, I suppose, a more humanized approach to content strategies, because in the end, businesses are made of people and people connect with other people which connect with stories. And even though the age to age approach has been discussed for a while now, it really hasn't uh, at least I believe, uh, shown that much in the actual tactics of, of B2B marketing, uh, which like traditionally has been leaning more towards performance as, as Hannah Nichols here uh, says uh, from the Tinkerbell from, um, and her team. Um, so um, many of the experts actually uh, went so far as to describe uh, B2B marketing being turned to its head and lending all the tactics uh, that B2C marketing has proven to be very effective on, on social um, and really using the edutainment aspect, for example, as described in the, the previous video. And also, which can be seen from a statistic from TikTok, thanks to the TikTok team from this uh, slide, um, really going for that inspiring content and finding ways for also B2B brands to be inspiring online uh, makes sense and makes good business sense as well. And moving on to trend number five, um, also related to the previous one. So um, influencers becoming uh, more niche, uh, which uh, for us marketers means uh, obviously more variety and which um, I think especially is beneficial to the B2B brands uh, since we are now seeing influencers popping up that are teachers, scientists, dentists, you name it. 
Um, so when we think about um, choosing influencers for projects and clients, um, we no longer need to go for the biggest one, but we can go for personality or credibility or uh, authority or a personal unique tone of voice or whatever that may be. Let's hear from Amy Bottrill from the UK. Hi, I'm Amy from Launch, one of the UK's leading independent creative agencies. In 2023, we expect to see more brands partner with experts from focused niches and tapping into new subcultures. Although glossy, polished macro influencers will still have a place in a holistic influence marketing strategy, the smartest brands will be able to quickly identify those who have an unconventional or unexpected point of view and whose communities truly trust them. This also means tapping into audiences who may have previously been neglected in the influencer ecosystem. Over 65s are on social media too, and they're influencing their peers who have real purchasing power. As the creator pool diversifies this year, brand marketers will have to increase their social media listening capabilities and be even more reactive in order to keep up with their competition. As both brands and influencers shift towards longer term partnerships, it will be more essential than ever to quickly identify loyal brand advocates for long term, meaningful, authentic collaborations. And using this type of, of key opinion consumers is on the rise, as uh, can be seen from, from this uh, chart. Uh, and we are talking about the, the really niche uh, nano uh, type of influencers. Um, and this can also be seen on the statistics, um, as we can see from the next uh, quote. So um, those campaigns do yield to a better ROI uh, than with the like the really big mega type of influencers. Um, and that's because they, the smaller nano ones have a better connect, a connection to their followers uh, and they gain more traction, more leads, uh, more conversions, more engagement, whatever your KPI might be. And then to the sixth one. So metaverse to grow via social. Now, this past year, 2022, saw the rise and fall in the interest towards the metaverse. So whether we look at the volume of online mentions about metaverse or uh, some related technologies, we see that they have peaked and then gone down. But the marketers, they are still eager to invest more and see where the metaverse could take them as can be seen from these statistics by walk. We analyzed uh, all the Canline winners uh, from this summer uh, in order to find out how many of them actually utilized this buzzword metaverse to some extent as part of their campaign. Um, and this study revealed that quite a many uh, of the world-class campaigns that were awarded in Cannes utilized, so 11% of these campaigns utilized Metaverse. So, so this goes to show that marketers have already tapped into the Metaverse in previous years as well. So once they are increasing their spend, we're going to see more and more of these things. And of course, the types of approaches to Metaverse have been skewing towards the more uh, let's say low hanging fruits or the traditional ones, uh, the ways of working, which are already familiar with uh, for the for the marketers. So, for example, gaming, which has been part of the marketing mix for at least 10, even 20 years. AR is another good example of these low hanging fruits, for example, utilizing the um, filters and lenses from various different social media channels, from Snapchat to Instagram and TikTok and so forth, uh, you can easily create these AR uh, experiences for your brands. And this leads us to what Laura Mazek said in her interview. So with Meta set to launch its AR enabled glasses, we can expect the company to start pushing more AR tools on Facebook and Instagram to get its best creators creating for the metaverse. So, this is one of the ways in which uh, the road, the path to metaverse goes 
through social media or hand in hand with social media. Uh, Vayner Media and their Vayner Free uh, division unit uh, company, whatever you want to call it, uh, just released their trends report. And in that, they kind of like outlined how some of these companies are somewhere in between like Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. So maybe talking about uh, Web 2.5 uh, with regards to some of the social media platforms that are well known and their uh integration of, of some of the metaverse technologies such as NFTs and so forth. So social media is really kind of like being the gateway towards the metaverse. Now let's hear it from James and his point of view from, from China, how he's seeing this uh, kind of like entanglement of uh, social and metaverse coming to life in the upcoming year. Hello, my name is James Hebert. I am MD of Highlink, the first natively Chinese digital agency to move west and establish in Europe. Now, in the past, China looked west to copy innovation, but we're seeing how the West now looks to China for what the future holds in social media and digital innovation. So how should brands approach the metaverse in 2023? After nearly three years of intermittent lockdowns, NFTs have allowed brands to connect with Chinese consumers in the digital realm, surpassing any lockdown-related restrictions that may prevent consumers from experiencing their products offline. For example, Chinese social media platform Red launched R-Space, dedicated to virtual fashion where users can buy, sell, and try on NFT clothing. So embracing NFTs will not only show a brand's commitment to innovation and creativity, it will also expand their target market, reaching consumers who may not already be able to afford their products offline. We predict that the intersection of NFTs and social media will only become more closely interrelated in 2023. Another really interesting intersection of metaverse and social media, something that many of the experts highlighted in their answers, is related to the rise of the virtual influencers. Uh, this is something that also, um, for example, Instagram highlighted in their own trends report, over half of the Gen Z social media users plan to get fashion or beauty inspiration from digital avatars or influencers in 2023. And this next uh, graph from Statista released just a week ago is uh, quite something, I would say. So. 35% of the people, consumers in, in the US say they have bought a product or service promoted by a virtual influencer. So it is really uh, becoming a thing and something that might be a gateway for your brand or your uh, client's brand towards metaverse via social. So something to really think about. Now the seventh trend here, prolonging the success of short form videos. So whether you like it or not, it is a fact that all our attention spans are diminishing. And I'm really thankful that I've, I'm seeing that the uh, participants count hasn't gone really down during these 33 minutes now. Um, but um, as has been a trend in the previous years, it is going to grow even in its importance even more in 2023 and brands really need to master the art of snackable size video. Let's hear it from Alex from Barcelona. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Casanovas, Digital Director at Atrevia in Barcelona. One of the trends in 2023 will be short form videos, probably the king format for this year. The short videos have been popularized by TikTok and now other platforms such Instagram with its Reels or YouTube Shorts are giving prominence to this format and promoting it uh, through the algorithm. Brands must capture the attention of users through impactful, clear and concise audiovisual content that hooks during the first seconds. It will be essential within the brand's content strategy to focus on producing videos in vertical format that go straight to the point and with subtitles since many users will view them without sound. So TikTok has really made the or 
made the importance of, of short form video even more important. And we can see everyone has seen these sorts of graphs about the rise of, of TikTok to become one of the key uh, players in, in the social media uh, sphere. And all of you who spend some time on TikTok or have been spending, you well know kind of like the TikTok aesthetics, the visual style of TikTok. So it is really, really fast paced with the edits and cuts and uh, superbly dynamic in the ways that those videos are put together in order to not lose the viewer despite the uh, the length of the video. Some videos may be even one minute long or so, but the pace is something that really makes it stick. And that it has something to do with also kind of like all the short form videos, whether you are creating a six second ad for Instagram stories, for example, you really need to make sure that there is something constantly happening, some new things to keep the attention during those long six seconds. Now we all know that uh, these short form videos, especially on TikTok, are superbly addictive. So uh, on average, uh, people spend 100 minutes uh, per day uh, on TikTok, those who are using TikTok. And also um, the amount of people who just need to open it on a daily basis is like one, almost one third of the user base. And also this has led to the younger generations preferring the platform to traditional TV when asked, where would you like to watch your favorite shows or stream your shows? So it is really something that has really, uh, it is not the only uh, place or channel responsible for the change towards more shorter and shorter and shorter videos, but it's really uh, kind of like taken that to the next level. And Alexandre here from Platform from China uh, summarizes also another good point related to this. So social e-commerce is all about short videos and live stream. Daily short videos are required to keep the audience interested and direct traffic to the live stream. There is a need for storytelling, which once again needs clever and economical answers. Imagine doing a TVC every other day. So this is something that all the brands need to really figure out or all the agencies, how can you create those short form videos uh, on a daily basis or whatever it may be, but you need to be able to create many of them and they need to be uh, superbly uh, addictive in their ways of, of uh, how they move forward within those six seconds or 10 seconds or whatever it may be. On with the eight. Yes, uh, and on with the B2B side of things. So since influencers are a part of almost every marketing um, B2C marketing campaign these days, it was only a matter of time when B2B influencer marketing uh, rose to the challenge. Uh, and it does make sense since many a times the B2B scene is, is a complex one and we need um, to be able to humanize complex services and what a better way to do that than through people. And um, many of our experts highlighted a really interesting viewpoint uh, to the influencer B2B marketing scene, which is uh, the internal one. And... Um, here launching or coining a really nice term here, we have the team Piabo. Let's hear from them. Hi guys, I'm Timothy Bagidi, Digital Communications Director at Piabo PR in Berlin, Germany. To me, the most important B2B trend for this year is what we call build your own influencer. Influencers are everywhere, but in the B2B world, the problem is that most of them are already linked to one specific company or only represent one specific tool or product. That's why we started to build our own. Together with our clients, we identify which employees are most likely interested in that role and have the biggest potential. We then start to build their personal brands and their social presences and identify what stakeholders are most likely to interact with them. These could be employees and their role could mainly be uh, an employer brand focused one or could be external stakeholders 
and they could have sales and business growth positions. No matter what, social media is the communication from person to person and corporate influencer accounts help increase the reach of the brand and our clients. Uh, and obviously, all types of employee advocacy programs have been going on for years now, but um, taking a point of view uh, that the also the internal people uh, can be built into influencers in their field um, makes it uh, feel a bit more powerful, uh, I think. And the numbers do speak for themselves, as Olivia Hussey here uh, points out, uh, especially in the upper funnel um, part uh, of metrics. So when we uh, talk about um, brand reputation, a brand image, um, we do see really um, influencers working uh, really well, and this taps nicely into, as mentioned, or influencers from all industries popping up, especially on TikTok. And talking about TikTok, um, if if you and us all are wondering how to, for example, take our B2B clients um, to TikTok, um, maybe the build your own influencer and identifying um, our own employees who are already influencers on TikTok might be a really uh, good way to go. And it does seem that the target group is increasingly uh, in TikTok already. And the final two trends that we wanted to highlight here uh, are related to the metrics side of social media marketing. Indeed. Uh, and um, as maybe the platforms themselves have been kind of pushing towards um, efficiency metrics such as CPMs, for example, um, and kind of looking away from engagement metrics, uh, many of our experts um, saw that the engagement and quality content quality metrics are uh, coming back, uh, so to speak. And um, we are talking about metrics that um, highlight uh, the quality of, of content, so conversations, but uh, also um, view through rates, completion rates, um, because we are fighting for that short attention span and be, to be able to really now measure how people are spending time with the content is, is becoming more and more valuable. Let's hear from Serenity Griffin from the US. Hey there, I'm Serenity with Adolescent Content, a black and female founded Gen Z social first agency based in the United States. Now, when it comes to the measuring and metrics of social media marketing in 2023, Gen Z is totally redefining what engagement actually means. Likes and views, they're out. Comment saves and shares are most definitely in. And beyond this, we see Gen Z is looking for ways to actually interact within content, to mash up through virtual experiences that go beyond commenting and sharing content. Gen Z don't care about likes and other easily forced statistics, no. They're looking for meaningful comments as a sign of authenticity and strong consumer sentiment. Gen Z is highly skeptical of brands that have low engagement and do not trust brands that do not have their comments enabled. So there you have it. <laughs> yes. Comments enabled. Skeptical of, of, exactly. Be, uh, indeed. <laughs> and then to the final trend. Yes. So, so predictive analysis um, and al analytics um, helping the KPI setting. Um, and um, instead of looking in the rear mirror uh, looking forward. And obviously, thanks to big data and AI, um, predictive analysis is, uh, is like really common in many industries, such as finance, for example. And it really is making its way uh, into PR uh, and marketing and comms. We have a tool of our own, for example, uh, within our agency, uh, because social does provide a lots and lots of data and which can be used in in many ways um, so being able to um, really assure the clients especially with new platforms rising um, TikTok for example so assuring the clients uh, why to invest what can be expected uh, we really can and should use uh, big data and AI to help us with this 
And there, the 10 uh, highlights from, from all the interviews that were done with the 40 uh, experts throughout the network one. Now, there you can find the report. Uh, please dive deep into that. There are almost 100 pages to go through and all the interviews by each and every agency in their entirety can be found there. So loads of great, great insights and gems to be found in addition to these that we highlighted here. So once again, we would like to thank all the uh, experts for sharing their time, thoughts with us. And thank you guys for staying with us uh, throughout this webinar, which wasn't, wasn't that short of a video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, so we've had a couple of questions through, uh, both in the chat and some via email. Um, so starting with the first one, uh, Guy has wondered, do you see forward slash anticipate an age-based migration from TikTok to Facebook? Or will Facebook continue to become less relevant as Gen Z ages? Um, come again. Do, do we expect that uh, there would be a migration from TikTok to Facebook? Was that? Yeah, I think. Yeah, as, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, as I think Gen I get. Z gets older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, understood. Um, remains to be seen. Um, it, it would be a surprise for many. Um, but of course, um, Facebook does have a rather good foothold and they are constantly building new things. Now, some of those new things may not have been successful thus far, but who knows where, let's say, Horizon Worlds or whatever it may be uh, from their more like metaverse side of things where it might actually be in two years or three years or four years time, who knows? So of course there is a possibility, but presumably not to the Facebook as we know it right now. Makes sense. Okay, thank you. Another question from Kyle. Um, I'm wondering if you have an opinion on YouTube opening up monetization on YouTube shorts and how that might affect the landscape of short form of short form video platforms? Um, well, I don't have, I don't know if Ellie, you have some sort of opinion with regards to that specifically, but all in all, I would say, if we look at the whole monetization schemes and, and how, how creators can make more, more bang for their for their time spent, let's put it like that. Uh, I think that's only a good thing. Uh, that's an mm. interesting shift in the whole media landscape and also it affects the whole creator culture and the economy, of course. Um, I think it's a good, healthy thing and be that whatever platform, I think it should flourish. Well, we'll see. And with regards to YouTube Shorts specifically, I don't know if if I I have an answer with especially to that particular thing. Yeah, I would have uh, agreed that it does seem all in all that the platforms are moving towards making uh, or doing more collaboration with creators and also kind of developing all the monetization schemes. So whether that's Instagram or TikTok, um, and I agree that that's a step in a kind of a more open and, and healthy and kind of um, fair um, state of, of things. Great, thank you. Uh, another question by email. Um, do B2B brands using social media need to work harder to get to gather momentum than b2c brands or is it better to approach both from a human to human perspective oh what a well, fantastic question <laughs> I, well that is a good one i i think they need to work less hard it, than, uh, than, I, I was about to say, i would have said exactly <laughs> the same thing because b2b uh, brands usually work with like such uh, important matters, or that might be the energy shift, or um, like 
building cities or like really big things that have affect all of our futures. So you might think that the company is trying to sell um, yet another like milk brand or oat milk brand. They have the hard job. Uh, but somehow it, it has been flipped due to all types of reasons from um, years back. And I don't see any reason why, especially on social, why B2B brands wouldn't be the most interesting ones. And also another point of view with regards to that is that B2C brands, at least the bigger ones, they have usually done everything. I mean, they have done quite a lot of things in their marketing and advertising and people have seen those but um, for various reasons b2b brands have not the the budgets are not usually the same and so forth uh, so social media has sort of like opened up new possibilities for them to surprise their target audiences be those how B2B focused or not. And also at the same time, speak to a, or appeal to a more general public, which may not be their core audience in any way. But yet again, of course, then those things, if if the general public finds out about this energy company due to their absolutely hilarious or surprising campaign, then of course it will be discussed in in industry verticals and, and in industry uh, groups on social and so forth. So yeah, I think it is the other way around. It's not that they need to work harder. I think they it is it is kind of like helping them uh, more than, than social is helping B2C brands. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, so Rad in the chat has said, can Web 3.0 guarantee the use of social media platforms? Can Web 3.0 guarantee the use of social media platforms? Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure I totally understand the question. Rad, could but, you elaborate a bit? Sorry, but yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, th I think that um, they might be saying that when, you know, we start using web 3.0 um will social media still be yeah yeah presumably yeah, yeah. um mm, who knows uh we we do still use some sorts of uh, web 1.0 ways of communicating and, and using the internet um even though web 2.0 has been around for 15 years or however you want to say it. um so it might be that the use cases and the ways of using web 3.0 are different and they cater to different needs than those that web 2.0 social media especially has catered for so who knows maybe we will still be using uh, facebooks and twitters when we are living in in virtual worlds who knows <laughs> Cool. Um, another question in the chat from Daniel. Uh, Daniel says, do you think there is any potential for businesses to market on Be Real, seeing as there are millions of daily users? Or is it more about learning lessons from Be Real about what people want? Mm, I think both are true. Usually, mm -hmm. usually you can make a whole lot of things from, from one ingredient. So or in this case, many different ones. But um, uh, I think uh, the uh, as as the, as now as of now, the uh, chances to do things on Be Real are rather limited for brands. So you can do good stuff, and it can be some additional uh, channel to your social media mix or or media mix altogether. But um, with the current tools and how it's built and, and the user base, uh, the amount of people on that platform and so forth, I don't think it will be challenging any of the more established uh, channels mm. so anytime soon. But some things may happen and, it, and they may fine tune their platforms and bring new features and so forth to make it more open for 
for easier for use easier to use and more interesting to use for for a wider user base and at the same time maybe bringing in some new features for brands and marketers to uh, help them make the most of it quite like uh, tiktok has been really making a great effort in their own uh, kind of like how they have built uh, their platform really uh, paying attention to the tools mm-hmm. they're providing uh, advertisers but yeah um, at the same time of course you can do loads of different things just stemming from the culture and the ways of using and the things that you're seeing on Be Real in all the other uh, campaigning and marketing whether it is on Instagram or whether it's in a TV campaign or whatever so both are true but of course uh, right now the ways of using Be Real are quite limited for brands. Right, we've got time for just one more question and it's a follow-up from Rad. And um, Rad has said, how can Web 3.0 affect the current social media platforms and the way that we interact with them? Um, I think Web 3.0 has already kind of like shaped those platforms in many ways. So as... um, for example, uh, Instagram has introduced these collectibles on their platform, for example, using the NFT technologies and so forth. Um, or if we're thinking about AR, which is part of the whole metaverse technology spectrum from AR to XR to VR and so forth. Um, of course, these platforms, as, as all of us know, have introduced all sorts of AR features so Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, TikTok, especially, have been introducing these uh, over the past couple of years already. So that is something that is definitely already happening. Um, and presumably that is also tied to the trend that we tried to highlight here. So that's one of the reasons why mm. why our experts or also saw that maybe the social media channels that we're already using and we have populated are kind of like paving the way towards us getting more used to these uh, metaverse related technologies such as nfts for example yep great thank you well that is unfortunately all that we have time for um so uh, if you didn't have a chance to ask a question you can get in touch with yari and ellie via the email addresses. Um, Yari's is J-A-R-I at curio, K-U-R-I-O dot F-I. And Ellie's is the same, but E-L-L-I at curio dot F-I. And you can find out more on their website, which is curio, K-U-R-I-O dot F-I. So I want to give a really huge thank you to Yari and Ellie for the great webinar. Um, and thank you guys all for coming. Um, we'll be holding our webinar Wednesdays once a month, and you can find them on our website under events at the network1.com forward slash webinars. You can also find past recordings there if you've missed any. Um, if you'd like to be the first to know about upcoming webinars, please email me at stephanie.fox at the network1.com and I'll add you to our mailing list. Um, and finally, uh, don't forget to sign up to the Indie Summit. Uh, you'll be able to see more of Yari and Ellie there, which would be great. Um, and again, big thank you to everyone who came today. Thank you so much to Yari and Ellie for your time. And we hope you have a great rest of your day. Speak to you soon. Bye.